Oh my. Oh my God. Think you guys have got problems? Take them. Babe! <laughs> you gotta go, mate. Let's hit it for another more Mondays. Uh, we're going to talk about one of the most common questions that I get asked all the time uh, around, should we go Windows or should we go Android? Um, and it's a bit like the babies, right? You know, the babies, it's like, which one do you pick? Um, and I know we're not supposed to be picking babies, but you know, everyone always has a little favorite. It's my little girl. That's, 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 that's the one. But she's crazy. She's absolutely crazy. But just like having twins and having babies, they come with their pluses and they come with their negatives as well. So when we're talking about... Uh, kind of teams rooms and we're, and we're thinking about what sort of platform um, that you want to deploy within the organization. Really, we want to start off by looking at kind of what the meeting room personas look like. And of course, from the screen that you see here right now, you'll see that we have a whole range of different OEMs out there, wonderful OEMs that work with Microsoft from uh, uh, kind of uh, PolyHP and Logitech and Yealink and Lenovo and Crestron, et cetera, um, you know, to the likes of Neat and Jabra and, and you know, Audio Codes and, and EPOS. Um, you know, all of these OEMs create great devices. Some OEMs will create Windows devices as well. Uh, and other OEMs are, are are really specific when it comes down to kind of the the Android platform. But the first thing that really that you want to look at when thinking about what types of devices to put into uh, your rooms is really start looking at the room itself and look at what we call the meeting room persona. Now you can start off by looking at um, actual person personal personas if you wanted to, and then that takes you into kind of like the voice realm, etc. But realistically, when we're looking at meeting room spaces, think about one, the size of the meeting room, and then really start thinking about, well, what types of meetings are going to take place there? And you'll see here on screen, I'm actually just going to go ahead and just hide my face a little so you can see what's going on. And apologies if you hear the, the babies going mad, right? Because, uh, yeah, they, they, they are crazy. But you'll see here, we've got two major ones that we really look at. We have what we call meet and present, and we have meet and co-create. Now, meet and present is effectively those types of meetings where you know you, you, you go in there, you present on screen, you talk about whatever's on screen, and then kind of the end of meeting. And then you've got on the opposite side, what we call meet and co-create, where you're actually sitting there to brainstorm, to actually work on a single canvas, to actually yield results at the end of it. So a bit like a brainstorming exercise. And a good way to try and figure out you know, the, the meeting room personas is think about where these meeting rooms are located. So for example, if you have a meeting room in, let's say the design department, chances are there's going to be a lot of co-creation that happens across there. Whereas if it's in, let's say the financial department where, you know, you're really just talking about figures and stuff, potentially it's going to be more of a meet and present type of scenario. So look at that first. Think of the meeting room persona, because this has a big bearing in terms of the OS or the types of devices uh, that you want to use. And, you know, really when we look at the types of uh, devices or the platform type, should I, should I say, there's three major considerations to really take into account. The first one is kind of the security considerations. So when we look at security, you know, a lot of organizations, especially the enterprise level types of customers, um, you know, will be using, in my opinion, old school security kind of policies. So they'll think about, you know, devices, Windows devices specifically joining onto their network and they need to have firewalls and they need to have, you know, they need to have antivirus and et cetera and this, that and other pieces of software that sit on top of it. You know, a lot of organizations are still kind of living in that age where they haven't really, you know, moved towards the cloud as an example and thinking about, you know, putting their trust in in kind of Microsoft security that we already have that, uh, out there uh, in the cloud. So think of the security considerations as well. And then on the flip side, we also have, organizations that already deploy things like Android phones. And if you're deploying Android phones, chances are they're going to have Android policies in place as well. Uh, and they're probably thinking, hey, if we're going to put an Android device, we're going to have to apply the same policies. Now, the same policies that you would apply to any laptop or PC joining onto your network or any Android device joining onto the network do not apply to Teams Rooms. And you would have seen this on previous episodes that I've done where Teams Rooms devices need to be and should be treated as appliance devices. These are devices specifically designed for meeting room spaces and do not have the same vulnerabilities as a standard PC joining the network. So, you know, when we look at those security considerations, do they need things like antivirus, you know, and if you can't talk through 
um, you know, uh, the security team. Because some security teams, you may not, they, they may just say no, full stop and not budge. Other security teams are a bit more flexible and they'll be open to kind of looking at what a what an appliance device is. But if you have those th those types of security teams, which are very, very, you know, kind of airtight and they say, no, nope, we can't do it without antivirus or, you know, adding a different image on, et cetera, then potentially you'd be looking at Android as a platform or vice versa. Right. So th remember, think of the um, think of the security considerations. And think of the type, you know, the types of policies that potentially need to be applied onto the device. And then you work out whether it's easier to go down the Android route or to go down the Windows route. Now, uh, again, I mentioned this in, a, in an earlier episode. And if you haven't seen it, please do check out the YouTube link uh, and you'll see earlier episodes where I talk about appliance devices. Each device has a whole bunch of security built into it. For example, when we look at Windows, uh, Windows, we completely lock down. So we take out things like read, write access, command prompts, command executables. Nothing will run except for the MTR app, the Teams Rooms app. So it's like in a kiosk mode. Even when we look at Android, as an example, we take out things like um, the Google Play Store. You can't sideload apps. There's no ADB, uh, you know, uh, policies or ADB, um, um, you know, switched on on these devices when they when, when they come out of the factory. So, again, they're very locked down airtight type devices. The other consideration you really want to look at is things like cable layouts. So depending on the room that you're putting it in. Now, again, when we look at room considerations, a lot of organizations want to then go ahead and start thinking about, OK, if we want to go ahead and create meeting rooms and we want to create small, medium and large, uh, they want to create standards. And a lot of times those standards are designed for rooms which are very similar, you know, the generic type of looking rooms. Now, if the room is made out of concrete or made out of glass, as an example, and you can't you don't have, you know, uh, channels for the cables to run run through it, then potentially something like an Android device could be a better option because within Android, we have what we call integrated uh, Android devices, which are all in one bars that have cameras, mic speakers built in with a single cable that pops out for networking, for power and for HDMI. Uh, and again, there's no channeling required, no routing through the ceilings, etc. When we look at Windows devices, Windows devices um, need to have cables because there's a touch console that sits in the middle of the table. So you need to wire that cable from the nook from the PC all the way through to the middle of the room uh, in some in, in, in some areas. And again, let me just get rid, get rid of my face because it brings me nicely onto that third consideration, which is the module modularity. Um, you know, when you're looking at those rooms, do you need external cameras, ex external mics, external speakers? Are you using audio DSP or are you using video matrices? Because if the answer is yes, there's going to be one, a lot more cabling and two, you're going to need more inputs, more I.O. ports, right, to be able to plug all of this in. And this is where Windows is really good because Windows allows that plug and play, allows you to plug cameras and mics and speakers in, allows you to kind of expand uh, your team's rooms for this traditional kind of, you know, camera mic speaker system into a fully fledged, you know, awesome uh, device that could be set in an auditorium space, as an example. So cable layouts and modularity become really key. If you don't need any of that, you don't need any external speakers, mics, cameras, etc., and, you know, you don't want to be running cables through the middle of the room, an Android device is amazing. But if you want to have that flexibility where you do want to upgrade and you do want to add additional components, Windows is a better option across there as well. Um, so those those considerations really then take into account. The other thing that I want to uh, kind of go ahead and uh, share with you as well is Microsoft actually have a page online uh, which with comparisons. So it's on our learn.microsoft.com webpage. Uh, you scoot over to the left hand side of the page and just down here on the on the left, you'll see Windows and um, uh, Android comparisons uh, across there. Uh, and as soon as you see that, you'll actually see a drop down list that starts giving you what Windows does versus what Android does now. Compared to a year ago or even two years ago when Android first hit kind of Teams rooms, um, it's now pretty much the same. So there are a few differences from Windows and Android, but for the majority of what most people want to do, you know, 99.9% .9 of what most people want to do in a meeting room space, both Android and both Windows will do it. There are a few little different things, and this list will kind of break them down for you. You know, as a classic example with direct guest join, Direct guest join is available on kind of the Windows platform, but not available on Android yet. It's coming. Um, and then when we look at things like SIP calling, so again, if there's a necessity for SIP calling, um, you know, within your meeting room space, then yes, you want to stick with the Windows option for now uh, versus Android. Now, this this um, 
uh, site does need updating, so there are a few differences that I've come across, um, but the, the but most of it is there right now. I mean, some of the bigger ones that people were really looking at last year were things like front row. You know, we want to create signature meeting rooms. We want to create front row experiences. You know, last year you weren't able to do that unless you had a Windows device. Now you can. So if you are using Android on Android, you can have dual screen. You can have the front row layout set up there with with chat functionality in there as well. However, in that in that signature room, if you need additional speakers, additional mics, then potentially you'd want to again go back to windows um if you're using them for things like um teams webinars currently today you can use a teams rooms and windows uh, as a participant uh for, for 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 kind of the live events um but you can't do that on android just yet uh and then there's some 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 additional things as well for example android works really well with touch screens uh, so if you are using android devices Android teams rooms with a touch screen for the microsoft whiteboard it's a phenomenal experience you can also have like the touch um, buttons that sit on the screen. So instead of you having to have a touch console in the middle of the table, if you have an Android device uh, on Teams Rooms connected to a touch screen, you can actually control the whole experience from the touch screen without the need of a touch console. So you can join a meeting and go into settings and open up the whiteboard and use a stylus or your finger. You can absolutely do that as well. And as I start kind of moving through this list, you'll see, you know, most things are on par with Windows and Android. But there are a few little things. For example, if you're managing your devices and you really want to, you know, uh, uh, see the insights for health check-in um, with external devices that are plugged into to your MTRs, we can pick up those signals on the Pro Portal if you're using Windows devices, but we can't do that on Android. And it's not a fault of the OEMs. It's not a fault of the actual, um, you know, device itself. It's just the way Android is built. Android was never built for plug and play, you know. So every single time that we want to add additional cameras and mics and speakers to uh, Android on Teams rooms, the OEM has to build that code from the ground up. Uh, unlike Windows, where pretty much all the drivers, the generic drivers, are built in on the OS, and you can just plug and play, and things just work. On Android, literally everything has to be built up. So I know, you know, a lot of you guys sometimes will give my, you know, my good old friend Ilya a bit of bit of slack around how long it takes things to come to Windows. It's not Ilya's fault. It needs to be built from the ground up. So things do take a little longer. But the team has been amazing. Uh, and over the last year, they've, they've really kind of stepped up the game and brought a lot of the features that are available on Windows now onto the Android platform as well. Um, so, yeah, this list is a really good list. Um, so, again, just going back to kind of the things that you want to look at, think about security considerations. Uh, think about, you know, what the security teams are looking for uh, when deploying devices onto the network. And remember, all we need is the local breakout to the Internet. We don't even need to touch the corporate network. So, again, that part of the security consideration. Speak to your Microsoft account manager if you need help there or your OEM account manager. Um, think about cable layouts. You know, is there a need to drill into walls or, and, and, and create channels, et cetera? Do you need a simple deployment? If the answer is yes, then Android is the way. Uh, if, if not, do you need to add additional uh, kind of components? Do you want the latest, greatest updates, you know, uh, first? If the answer is yes, then then you want to uh, kind of move towards uh, the Windows element. So there is no right or wrong answer. There is no Windows is better than Android or Android is better than Windows. They're actually both really, really good. And they both have their strengths and weaknesses, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So always start off at that room persona piece, the considerations piece. And then from there, when you have a look at the site on the learn.microsoft.com, you should be able to very quickly figure out which um, platform that you want to work with. And remember, a lot of our customers out there actually use both platforms on their estate. For their kind of large rooms and their boardrooms and their signature rooms, they stick to Windows. Uh, and then for all the traditional small medium rooms, which are similar looking, they'll have Android. And there's no problem having Windows and Android, you know, uh, as uh, uh, deployed onto the same estate. Uh, across there. So hopefully I've been some use across here. I need to get back to those babies. I can hear them crying like crazy. My wife's going to go mad. Um, so that's one challenge, one problem that we've solved with you guys. I need to go solve mine. So with that in mind, be sure to like, subscribe and follow on the YouTube channel. And no doubt I shall see you in a week.